Good morning and welcome to Robert Case, Commanding Officer, Command Senior Enlisted Leaders, distinguished guests, NRC future staff, family and friends. I would like to welcome you to Pat Isaac and extend a warm welcome to all our busy friends, guests. We are honored by your presence this morning. I am Master Chief Matthews, Grand Master Chief of Navy Medicine Rares and Training Command Buford. I will be your Master of Ceremonies. On behalf of the Commanding Officer, Chad E. Rowe, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the Navy Command of Navy Medicine Rares and Training Command Buford, where Cap Chad Rowe will relieve his command, Captain Tracy Isaac. The presiding officer for this change of command is Rear Admiral Matthew Case, Commander, Naval Medical Forces of Atlanta. The change of command is a ceremony of the time honored tradition of forming the committees, to the sailors of the command, the cockpit of the command, the fundamental guidance of the change of command resides in the Navy Regulation Chapter 8, Article 0807, which outlines the turnover and leave of a commanding officer. The outgoing commanding officer shall inspect the command in the company with the leading officer to ensure that the command meets all safety, training, and operational readiness standards, as well as make sure that all administrative requirements are sustained. At the time of the turnover of the command, the command officer will be relieved, will call all hands to muster, read the orders of attachment, turn over the command to his or her relief, who will read their orders and relieve the suit of command. The ceremony you with us today, although not specifically described by any regulations, has become part of a rich heritage of Native tradition, custom, and established that the ceremony be formal and impressive. The respect and authority will supply with any military organization. The heart of the ceremony will be the formal reading of official orders, which stems from the days when the movement of a correspondence was a much slower process. This procedure was designed to ensure that only duly authorized officers held command that all board were aware of those orders of authenticity. Today, the primary purpose of the chain of command is to allow subordinates to witness the formal transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one officer to another. This ceremony has added color and pageantry to military life, which also preserves our heritage and our tradition while stimulating the street of war. We will follow those traditions today for the chain of command. The music for today's ceremony is provided by the United States Marine Corps Band, Repeat New Co Paris Island, under the direction of Staff Sergeant and Justice Oklahoma. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party for main stand for the presentation of colors in our national anthem and the occasion. Navy Medicine Range and Training Command Beaver, us in the Post it. Post the side boys. Boats, it's out four bells. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, 
our national anthem. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, I ask your blessing on this change of command ceremony where we celebrate the accomplishments of Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command Buford under the command of Chap Captain Chadwell. And we welcome Captain Tracy Isaac as she takes command this morning. Oh Lord, under the command of Captain Rowe, we have navigated tremendous seas over the last two years. Structural changes in our organization, and yet in the midst of constant burning of providing world-class medical care to the making and sustaining of our Marines and sailors and their families. Oh God, thank you uh, for our Captain Rose leadership in guiding and shepherding us through constantly churning waters. Leadership marked by modeling a good work and life balance as he casted a vision for our command, cared well for our families, and led from the front on the ultimate Frisbee playing field. Oh God, thank you for his family and friends who have been an anchor through this relentless demand on, of this, uh, and his naval command. And God, we welcome Captain Isaac to the low country and look forward to the opportunity to flourish as a commander under her leadership. Oh Lord, we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. For the guests, please be seated. Please join me in recognizing our distinguished visitors and honor guests in the next day's ceremony. Please hold all your applause until all guests are introduced. We are honored to have them in the next day from the Congress Office, Woman's Mace, Mr. Heath, and this is Tenet Wendell Wall. Brigadier General Ahmad Williams of the United States Marine Corps. Brigadier General David Everett of the United States Marine Corps. SDS Sonia Lamont. Colonel Mark Borton of the United States Marine Corps. Colonel Natasha Everett, United States Marine Corps. Captain Tim Toon, United States Navy. Captain Annie Willenbrown, United States Navy. Colonel Jason Sear, United States Army. Colonel Douglas Lamont, United States Marine Corps retired. Captain Sonny Waters, United States Navy retired. Colonel Neil Pocalesi, sorry, right there. U.S. Marine Corps retired. Command Sergeant Major, Sal Garcia. Command Sergeant Major, Brian Alfaro. Command Sergeant Major, Jan Miller, United States Army. Command Master Chief Chuck Eaton, Master Chief Bruce Carr, and Master Chief Nick Lewis It's my honor and privilege. Service Corps, United States Navy, Command 
Thank you, Master Chief. This uh, working? Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to have you all here. Uh, you know, Naval Hospital is busy, uh, so uh, things are happening on Paris Island this morning, I believe. Uh, so it's nice to have in attendance. And I wrote my speech for 45 minutes, thinking we're outside. So since it's not outside, I'll go for an hour. How's that? <laughs> now, I'll be brief. Uh, but I do want to take time to recognize this incredible, incredible command and these incredible leaders. So uh, thank you, everybody, uh, to our honored guests, our general officers, uh, flag officers, our uh, SES, and commanding officers and master chiefs. Thanks for being here today. And then uh, I want to recognize the family a little bit. But the Roe Ro family has so many people I've been here for a while doing that. So thank you for coming. And I know you have to get on the road. More about that in a few minutes. So, um, But thank you uh, for being here today. Uh, I'm honored to be here as we uh, thank Captain Chad Rowe for his leadership here as commanding officer. And we welcome Tracy Isaacs to the team. Uh, before we, I move on any further, as naval officers, our families uh, root us. They keep us sane, they keep us motivated, and, and they take care of us. So to our families that are in attendance, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I, I couldn't do it without my family. I know these two great leaders couldn't either. So I'm going to take a moment to recognize the families. Pam, are you here? The car is ready. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Evan and Riley, I met you when you were about four or five years old, so you've grown up. You look great. Uh, and I know you have some additional family here as well. Sister, Ma, right, okay. Uh, and some friends from out of town. So thank you for being here. Tracy, I had a moment to, to walk through. Uh, you got, you had some, did you manage your brothers or did they manage you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a crew. I, I automatically, uh, despite our New York, New England thing going, I, I think we got a good thing going here. So Stanley and Arlene are here. Uh, I, I'm at Erskine. Walter, Eva, Eva here, and uh, Kinda Scott. Right? Okay. Thank you for thank you for uh, making that drive down 95 and being here. Uh, that's not for the faint of heart. So thanks for thanks for being part of this time here today. So uh, a little bit about about our mission here. And, and I was here a few weeks ago, seems like a few weeks ago, maybe about six weeks ago outside. It was a beautiful day where we celebrated the 75th anniversary of this great command. Normally I'll speak a little bit about the history. I will just say this, though, I won't go into detail except for this. 19, uh, April 1949, the, surgeon, the 24th Surgeon General at the time, Rear Admiral Clifford Andrews Swanson, articulated the vision for this hospital when it opened. He reminded the, the crew there. It was the paramount importance of maintaining a robust military uh, medical force, asserting, and this was in 1949, until such time as the day of permanent peace arrives, we must be in a position to protect our homes, our families, and our nation. Since his remarks that day, this command has stood ready, serving as a force generating pipeline for our Marine Corps, training medical personnel for the fight, and taking care of those who serve, those who serve, and families throughout the low country. From this historic building in the Naval Hospital, the NMRTC extends out to two uh, branch clinics, one at the Marine Corps Depot Paris Island, supporting approximately 20,000 recruits annually, and the other one at the Marine Corps Air Station. This command impact reaches far beyond just the military, though, as they frequently engage with the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office, the Emergency Management Office team, the county, uh, medical services and the fire department for both exercises and real world emergencies. They are also cherished a strong partnership with our Veterans uh, Affairs Administration team, housing a community-based outpatient clinic here that ensures our veterans receive the care they deserve in the low country. As we look to the future, we remain dedicated to our mission as a maritime medical force and the Naval Hospital and MRT C. Buford efforts uh, serve as a way to propel our Navy medicine goal to deliver agile, scalable, trained and certified medical units, supporting our fleet, our fleet marine force, and our joint forces across all phases of force development, force generation, and force preservation. This command, you stand as a testament to our enduring mission, to the unwavering commitment of all who serve within its walls. Together we honor the past and embrace our present, and we look to the future where Navy medicine continues to lead with excellence and passion. 
for all those that aren't here that are serving our Marines, we'll, we'll help support that pipeline and all our attendants from this great team. If I could have a round of applause for them, I'd appreciate it. So it takes a great leader to run a team, and uh, Chad Rowe, you've been that great leader. Unparalleled dedication and mission accomplishment, providing health care support for Marines while continuously maintaining a raise greater than 97% for base personnel and graduating Marines, to include 100% for 10 companies. You led this team to streamline the recruit medical readiness, resulting in a 30% reduction of processing time, while successfully transitioning 31,000 benefits raise to our new electronic health record. These accomplishments and more are reflective of your naval expertise and guidance. I wish you and Pam safe travel. So I'm a little bit jealous because the greatest job ever is being in command. I know, Randy, you, you're feeling that. Uh, Kim Toon, I know you know that. I've seen some other CEOs, and I believe my general officer friends would agree with that. Your time in command is nothing better. Well, Chad Rowe gets to do it again. So I'm very jealous. But he gets to, we get to do this again in about four days. So he's got to go get on the road in a few hours. So Pam, I recognize the sacrifice of that. You know, it's, hi Pam, how are you? How's the household good going? Are you able to do a house to house? You know, these are typical questions that we're having. Not how are you having a nice day, how's it, but what's next? So Chris and I are doing the same thing right now, negotiating that. So I know the sacrifice of that. I'm very jealous you get to go up to Great Lakes. This is a nice time of year to be there, be in command. But thank you for stepping up and doing that. You're going to do a great job. And so when one goes, one comes in. Tracy, I got to tell you something. Uh, I, I'll write a little bit. I asked the team, hey, tell me a few things about Tracy so I can add to this. And they gave me like four pages of, of your history. And I'm like, she's awesome, OK? So we're going to, but I'll, I'll say a little bit, but I'm going to cut. They were talking about your days with uh, second FSSG Marines. That's a while ago, right? I was there too, so we weren't going to, we're not going to date ourselves. But Tracy, you've had an impressive career uh, demonstrating leadership while taking on increasingly challenging positions throughout our Navy medicine and military health system. From deployments overseas uh, and assignments overseas, you've maintained dedication to both patient care, professional development, and the medical staff, and ensuring a higher standards of medical practice. Most recently, uh, Tracy, uh, she served as the Executive Officer of Navy Medicine Operational Training Command in Pensacola, where you, my friend, furthered our, our excellence in education and training, and you solidified your leadership credentials. Tracy comes here with a breadth of experience, leadership, and unwavering dedication to Navy Medicine, and that has made you well prepared to step up the big shoes that, that Chad Rowe has. And I'm really excited to have you today. So although this leadership uh, transition creates new opportunities and challenges, uh, this command, this leadership team will continue to rise up to the mission. I uh, wish you both the very best. Safe travels to the Rowe family. The other Rowe family stay in put, right? The kids stay in put. Yeah, it happens too, and we do this all. Uh, and Tracy, thank you for stepping up and being part of this, this ongoing tradition. You want us? 37 CO, is that right? 36. 30 years, 35 and 36, all right. So, congratulations. And what you'll understand, Chad, you're about to understand, this is your home command. Uh, there's nothing like it. And so you're part of the history there. Uh, someday someone will laugh at you with your picture on the wall, probably, because you'll be looking at and all that. You're part of history now, so. And Tracy, create, create a new path here. Congratulations. So I uh, thank you all. May God bless these two great leaders, this great command, uh, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Navy, and our great country. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
June 2022 to June 2024, Pat Rose's strategic leadership and extraordinary vision were pivotal in the delivery of highly valuable care to 31,000 eligible beneficiaries and 40,000 United States Marine Corps recruits by building unprecedented partnerships and synergy across four higher echelon commands. And they were the provision of the comprehensive health services for Marine Corps recruit Nico Paris Island and Marine Corps Air Station Butte, supporting operational mission readiness force development and force deployment in the parents of the United States Marine Corps. Provide critical and timely leadership to ensure the line of three military treatment facilities to aid in the defense of the health, defense health agencies to integrate system of health and readiness. It that we got the command through a successful medical inspector general survey, a command climate survey, and to even above the shore command averages in 11 areas, fostering trust and confidence across the command. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal devotion to duty, Cat Road reflected great credit upon itself and up the high tradition of the United States Navy Service. For the President, E.H. Black III, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Director, of Navy Staff. Tracy, you brought Holly with you with all these stars. Uh, you've got you surround yourself with a lot of uh, talented people, and I want to you know, welcome you today and thank you for coming and supporting this change of command and recognizing Tracy's move forward, uh, all the leadership that's out in the out in the crowd. Um, but thank you so much. But uh, uh, first off, I'll take the first ten percent off and give it uh, to my Lord and Savior. He gives me the strength and guidance throughout my career. And I just want to recognize that first off, that he's helped me guide and direct as we move forward uh, in this leadership roles. It's humbling to be able to be in this position, to be able to support and drive a command, to be able to meet a mission that's bigger than ourselves. As we support the Marine Corps, as we make Marines over there from the recruit piece, uh, to keep those jets in the air, Storty, uh, uh, it's really one of those things that we do to make support uh, our American freedom. So I just want to say uh, thank you for that guidance throughout my life and, and continue on. Uh, to my lovely wife, Pam. It's tough. It's always hard saying goodbye uh, and moving on to our next one, next level. But uh, it's been really good uh, here. You know, she's, she anchors me down. She keeps me uh, 
real rudder straight. Um, never want to take you for granted, hero. You're you're my best friend. Uh, you know, great mother, a sister, uh, and the, and the list goes on. So I, I really want to recognize that today. Just love you, Penny. Uh, and we have a lot of family here. I'll, I'll really quick. I'll go through them quick. I know uh, it's kind of gets on, but you know my, my sister-in-law Carol. Uh, she's she's a she's a, a, a great asset. She's she's like an anchor of the family. She uh, you know it's tough. Uh, Pam, my wife, is the youngest of eight, so uh, Carol has been afforded the opportunity to come out with most of, almost all of our uh, PCSs. She's helped us move transition from one town to the next, one duty station. Uh, uh, and just want to say thank you, uh, minus that huge suitcase you brought. She brought one of those suitcases you see on that Titanic. Uh, <laughs> you know what it's like living out of a car, and here she comes, rolling out of the airport, thinking, here I am. Uh, just kidding. But I uh, really do want to say that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I also have a, a sister online. Uh, she's not here with us today. She's got some medical issues. Uh, Dawn, I love you, along with my mom, who can't be issues back in Indiana. Uh, my sister Lenny here with her husband, uh, Chris. I uh, just want to say thanks. Uh, of course, Melody. You know, it seems like it was just yesterday, right? doesn't it? We were up here doing the same thing. I think that back then the discussion was we were talking about gypsy lifestyle. Well, I think the theme this year is homeless. Uh, we are literally, our, our, I think, our 13th or 14th time being homeless. Uh, like uh, Admiral Case was mentioned at that door to door, I think we've only done that once. Uh, so, other than that, I think this is uh, an, another time for us to express that gratitude of of the lifestyle it, it, we've adopted and, and it adjusted to. Um, but I uh, want to say thank you, and you are the support anchor for our, uh, our lovely daughter. Uh, thank you for all that support, you and Greg, and the family support you, you, you provide there. Uh, you know, I do have some friends back, back here, uh, Bill and Ben. Um, if you could just stand real quick, and the reason I'm asking you to stand, I would like all the veterans to stand. They're both uh, military veterans. We got a Marine Corps and Mr. Army God, Bill, that's you. Can I have all the veterans standing in the room, please? All the veterans. Yes, thank you. Um, I never want to miss an opportunity to provide an opportunity to recognize our veterans. I appreciate all the service you, uh, you provided our nation. Um, all the way to the top back here, Mr. Houston, that's you. Um, but yes, um, our, two, our community partners uh, are throughout the uh, here from the representatives to the, uh, the local leadership within Paris, uh, within Port Royal and Buford. Uh, it's just been a great opportunity to come out and help, and this is a special place here in the Low Country. Uh, the warmth and generosity we've seen uh, through this is legendary. I just want to say thanks for all the support we have gotten and received through the Chamber of Conference to. Uh, local leadership. Uh, now, serving as, a, as the officer of the Naval Hospital and, uh, and also the installation here, uh, it's been a profound, uh, well, a profound honor. It really has to the opportunity to serve in a role where you get to uh, take away from yourself, but serve in a role that is much larger than yourself, and it comes together with the team. Uh, nothing's done by ourselves, uh, and we've navigated through a lot of changes and challenges, um, and uh, celebrated a lot of achievements over the last couple of years. And we really have said goodbye and hello to several people. It's a typical process within the military system, right? You see, people. You know, we we all have about a you know a hundred. You know, we have about a thousand days. Sometimes we have about nine, you know, seven hundred days on station, then we move on to the next one. Uh, so we just take to make the most of each of those opportunities as we kind of celebrate uh, all the efforts we've put together to make this organization meet its mission. Uh, I would like to recognize that we did have, uh, in October of 22, we mourned the loss of a well-known employee, Mr. Gerald White. He was an Army veteran who, who was part of the Naval Hospital for over 20 years. I just wanted to say that's something that happened during my tenure and I just wanted to recognize him during this time as well. Now we engage with the community, including the uh, you know visitors across the board, and, and they talked about the importance of working together. You know, just like uh, Admiral Case had mentioned, we had celebrated the 75th anniversary of this installation uh, of this hospital and uh, all the work that went into that, and kind of showing um, what we have done here. Specifically, celebrating, and I think we talked about that. You know, uh, we're, we're we're celebrating history. We're also 
uh, making history today as Tracy steps into this new new role and uh, takes this to the next level. We we've, we've navigated through an order, reorganization of the defense health uh, markets, the defense health networks. Admiral Case is very familiar with that as I've kind of switched the roles from the small market that was out of San Antonio out to the, to, to the one that's uh, on the eastern seaboard here uh, under his t uh, tenure. Uh, we've, we've answered a lot to the Veterans Affairs, the VA, which is a part of the, our hospital now, is embedded with us. We've continued to expand our spaces where we find an opportunity where we can work together and allow that to happen. So all the hard work is done by uh, Karen Carter and the healthcare business right along with uh, Commander Cornell and Commander Ruby Stills. They all supported trying to figure out how to manage that change. And we manage more than one water intrusion, haven't we, the DFA? Commander Ianni, uh, I think he likes to call her old Betsy. Um, she might have good bones, but she, she's not waterproof, and she continuously leaks. And I don't know, Massachusetts attested that on Christmas Eve a couple of years ago. We all got to celebrate trying to pick up as much water as we could before, uh, uh, before Santa Claus came. Uh, we also moved our quarter deck. Uh, we did that for, you know, meeting the needs of our patients, kind of transitioning from uh, the front of the hospital over to where most of our patients come in, and it's also ADA compliant. Um, we keep our electronic records throughout the, the network and we transition throughout all of the uh, many of our materials. And one of our successful journals that comes out of this section is a testament. Um, and I'd like to especially mention the next support facility for the security force, and the next group of forms for the rats and the theft. And I'm sure you're going to do great with your heart. Don't worry, Tracy. Mr. Houston, tell you all exactly what your eyes are. Olivia's as well. You're going to be uh, shot, shot across the bow with a lot of actors you're not familiar with, but you're in good hands. Uh, they might have gotten apart, and I continue, they're going to continue to do that. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Hurricane Ian, from your list, you got that back in the, the no. Talk about a culmination of this, right? I think we had the manpower people here from the NACMAC. We had the Genesis Pit 4 team right along with a uh, storm brewing off the coast. All those kind of culminated in, in the same time. You know, like, again, we all kind of rolled the punches and continued to move forward. And that's kind of the stuff we do here in one country, the Buford team. Our personnel also coordinated for the medical response. The aftermath of the F-35 Lightning 2 jet in-flight mishap, providing medical support and maintaining personnel and scene safety for 12 consecutive days during the efforts of the, of the crash site. You know, and we managed two hot stops. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with hot stops, uh, we did those in 22 and 23. But the hot stop stands for hot standard operating procedure, and that's what the Marine Corps goes through every year. They they they, they acronym they like. We like a lot of acronyms in the military, so they use the term JJAZ, June, July, August, and September. And uh, basically, they basically surge uh, the capacity of Paris Island, testing the limits of how many people they could process in moments. Uh, in, in, I say moments. They got 13 weeks that every minute is accounted for. General uh, and your team do a phenomenal job processing them. I know uh, Commander Lin, you're out there somewhere. Our officer in charge over there at Paris Island does a great job. I think he's in the midst of it right now as we get this transition from the June, July. Uh, I gotta stop using that word, according to my wife, she said. So as we move from June to July uh, uh, for, uh, for 2004, 24, uh, that's a normal part. And this is where we can show that we are helping become part of the we and making the Marine Corps. So our dedicated stuff, I want to say thank you, because there's a lot of work that goes into doing the different times of the year. The, the effort that we see put through Paris Island um, during these increased months, sometimes the workload will more than double. They'll process hundreds, if not thousands, in uh, weekly manners. I think I see you know, four, five, seven hundred people processed at one time coming in through our recruit uh, medical uh, sections. Yeah. But like I said, it's an essential part of we and we make Marines. Uh, from the trunk and treats to the command holiday parties at Alt 5, um, from the Corman Ball to the Army-Navy game, you know, like I always gotta say, I don't know if our Army buddies are here, I know our, our one buddy down there is, it's like, like I said, we're gonna go, go Navy the Army. Uh, we typically have a, a little spree de corps with the uh, Wynn Army Medical Center down there in uh, Fort Stewart, uh, and we continue to, continue to maintain that trophy. So Tracy, 
That's one of your duties as well. Make sure you bring that, that, that trunk when we get. Our volunteers support the community and events that I can count. It's, it's countless. You know, I'll mention a few like the water festival, karate tournaments, the uh, 10K races, along with air shows and the women's shelter, local schools and parades. And even we celebrate, we have to celebrate 150 years of Port Royal. Our centers have been a continued enthusiastic part of the vibrant low country. Now, team success is dependent on a talented pool of people. I have been blessed with a group of directors. From 456 to KFC, I want to say how much I appreciate all the work I got from the, that strong team. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, they've all stayed focused and they gave a uh, 100% plus. Uh, one brilliant team to make up uh, our Navy medical support here, both uh, inside the hospital and the installation at the Tenton in our base. So, as we continue to talk, uh, I wanted to you know, also mention a few other people. We do have uh, uh, so the triad. I think I see the triad here, kind of scattered around from Charleston. Thanks for coming here, right along with the Rapoli or whatever your name is. Uh, uh, yeah, Public School 121. Oh, yeah, sir. Hoorah. Yeah, it's always a pleasure here. I'll speed this up. I know Bladder Bob might have used the bathroom pretty quick. But anyways, uh, thanks for coming today. We appreciate that. Uh, and uh, your support is XO very much uh, our tenure together. But the, it just kind of shows the, the teamwork that kind of goes into play. It's a large name, but it's also a small name as we continue to see familiar faces throughout, the play, uh, throughout, throughout our inner careers in, in military medicine. Uh, Master Chief Matthews, you made it easy. You really did. Uh, I knew this guy when we were stationed back at Kings Bay, uh, Georgia, it's a submarine base down there in uh, southern Georgia, and uh, uh, we, we've just kind of clicked ever since then. Uh, you are significant accomplishments across the board. Over these last two years, you have been there uh, for the hospital, for the clinic, for the command, nonstop. You always uh, stepped up and you did stuff. Uh, and you've also been there for me. I appreciate that, and I will. Uh, Thanks, sir. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I don't know. Nikki probably doesn't come to these things. She's kind of shy to those things. I'm sure she'll hopefully look it online. But Nikki, uh, she's my administrative assistant. She's kept me online. She's kept that rudder straight uh, and keep me on time. She's taken chaos and put some organization to it and keep me on time. So. Uh, with that, I'll continue with my remarks uh, and preparation. Uh, I look back over my career and looked at all the different places that I've been and things that I've done. Uh, and I, I have to agree with uh, Admiral Case, there's nothing like being in command. It's a wonderful job. I loved every minute of it. Uh, I soaked it all in. It's, it's, it's hard to say goodbye, but it's nice to say I'm going to be able to go to an, another opportunity at this. So uh, it's just it's just. A, unwavering opportunity to be able to serve in this role and to be uh, given that responsibility. Um, so now, to the men and women of Buford, your dedication and commitment are truly inspiring. I carry a piece of all of you within, within the, this new chapter as I head off to Great Lakes. Um, uh, but before I conclude, uh, a tremendous effort of those have are organized today. Um, And I got a little special treat here, if I could. I'd like to dive in. Uh, I do have a little son here. He's, he's got a special day today. I asked the band, you know, if we could, audience, indulge me. Can we sing happy birthday to my son, Evan, who just turned 22 today? <laughs> that of course uh, it is my son's 20, uh, 22nd birthday here on he, I think he worked till midnight last night I think he got off work uh, in time to celebrate his birthday as he came home from the uh, the pit master or whatever he does at the barbecue place and then uh, uh, and, and Riley you always been there for me so my two favorite kids uh, band you're, you're awesome 
You guys do great all the time. Thank you. Uh, if I could real quick, I'd like to recognize Chaplain. And I got a trombone guy up there. There you go. So Chaps was a, was, a, was a musician before he became a chaplain. He was a, a Navy man. So, it's a recognition to you for all your support over the years. It's been outstanding. I'd like to also thank Lieutenant Ramirez. Uh, she's uh, nonstop. She helped coordinate this, put this together. And uh, very strong jar. I'd like to always thank our honor guard. did a great job. They continue to do that right along with uh, their dedication with the funeral honors that they support on a regular basis. Now, it is my distinct order to pass this baton on to your friend and mine, Captain Tracy Eisen. Tracy, your reputation for excellence, dedication, and service are well known. Just like Admiral Case mentioned, uh, pages of pages of your strong performance and obviously surrounding yourself with strong leadership, mentorship, and coaching throughout your career is going to pay you benefits as you take the helm of Navy Hospital Buford. Your leadership without doubt guide, will guide and support the hospital and facility and the installation and to new heights. I have every confidence and ability, your ability to lead this exceptional team and continue our mission and distinction. And I know this team will give you their very best, just as they did with me. Pam and I uh, wish you well, and we know you will enjoy your time in the beautiful low country of Beaufort, South Carolina. Again, thank you for all your support, your hard work, and your hard, unwavering dedication. May God bless you. May he bless our currently serving in the harm's way and continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. by reporting senior detached from Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Buford, Naval Support Facility, Buford, and proceed to Navy Medicine and Readiness Training Command, Great Lakes, as commanding officer. You are relieved of your duties. Signed by M.W. Bays, Rear Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Personnel Command. Captain Isaac, I am ready to be relieved.
the seven was one of victory to be born after battle. Today, this naval insignia recognizes the responsibilities and importance of command in major program management. I will be brief because your time is precious. I want to thank Rear Admiral Case and Rear Admiral Hewitt, Commander Navy Region Southeast, for the opportunity and trust and confidence to serve in a capacity that I never imagined for myself when I reported to active duty in Newport, Rhode Island 23 years ago. First, I want to thank God for his greater purpose, grace, and mercy, which drives my life and path. I'm here to serve and I'm humbled, and it's a great honor to be blessed to serve in command. Secondly, I want to recognize my family and friends. These people support me, pray for me, laugh and cry with me, and hold me accountable as you are my neighbor. To my brothers, thank you for supporting your little sister. That's the last time I would say little sister. <laughs> Our parents, especially our mother, is proud of us. And if she was here, she would be uncontained and uncontrollable in her applause right now. I want to thank my Navy and Marine Corps friends, my chosen family. Fun fact, I called the Marine Corps recruiter in 2000 and stated I was a nurse and I was seeking our opportunity to serve our country and become a gunny. That's what I wanted to be, a gunny. So he graciously explained that the Marines do not have nurses, nor could a registered nurse be a gunny. However, that the Navy provided health care to the Marine Corps and redirected me appropriately. So this is a reminder, everyone plays a part in recruiting, and he was essential in making this Naval officer. In 2001, I started my Naval career at what was then called Naval Hospital Camp Lejeune and embraced the Marine Corps as a Naval officer. To my shipmates and Marines, thank you for traveling from afar to bless me with your presence and the present, which is sacred. Thank you, mentors. As I could only obtain unthinkable achievements in my personal and professional career with your support and coaching and direction. I stand before you today upon your shoulders as my mentorship in the Navy started as a junior officer through the National Naval Officers Association, which actively supports sea services in developing a diverse officer corps through recruitment, retention, and career development. I have mentors within the Navy 
and the Marine Corps, as well as civilians in the government and private sector, as you can only be successful by surrounding yourself with greatness. On a personal note, I would like to acknowledge Robert Clements, retired Marine Corps Colonel, for his contribution to my professional development as he could not be here today. To my sorority sisters of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, I would like to give a special acknowledgement to the international board members who are present, Southeastern Regional Director, Dr. Celeste Levon, and Northeastern Regional Director-elect, Ms. Dawn Staddy. True sisterhood is precious, consistent, and steadfast. And to my sorors and sisters, it is more significant now than I can ever imagine, as it is the basis of our sisterhood as we live by our motto, greater service, greater progress. Now, to the sailors and civilian staff at Navy Medicine Readiness Training Command Buford, Naval Hospital Buford, and Naval Support Facility Buford, I am honored and humbled as I absorb the full responsibilities inherent in all entities. Your contributions are invaluable, ensuring the health, wellness, safety, and readiness in the Navy and Marine Corps warfighters and families. We will continue our partnership with the Beaufort and Port Royal communities, Marine Corps uh, Recruit Depot, Paris Island, Marine Corps Air Station Beaufort to support our Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Franchetti's priorities of warfighting, warfighters, and the foundation supporting them. To Chad Rowe, as you embark on your next chapter of your career, know that you leave behind a legacy of excellence within the 75 years of Naval Hospital Buford. Your leadership has left an inedible mark on all of us, and Chad, your contributions will be remembered. Safe travels for you and Pam tomorrow. Once again, I'm gonna keep this short. I want to express my profound gratitude to everyone present and those present in my life, however absent from this space right now. Semper Fidelis, Semper Fidelis. Hurrah. for my brothers. God, your, your word reminds us that you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. O Lord, go before Captain Rowe and his bride, Pam. Fair and keep them in your perfect peace as you call them forward. O everlasting rock, by your perfect peace, equip, nourish, and guide Captain Isaac for this awesome responsibility of command. And may she sense your perfect peace in your providential hand and give her a gift of herself to this service of this command, this Navy, and our country. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Moses, sound six bells.
naval medical forces of the Atlantic departing. Bosun, sound four bells. <laughs> Navy Medics Reddicks is trying to command Buford, a Naval Support Facility to Buford, departing. Bosun, sound four bells. Captain, United States Navy, departing. <laughs>